All right, and so up next, we got a welterweight bout. We got the German in David Zawaha. He's taking on Ramazan Amiev. I believe that's how you say your name. I'm, mm -hmm. I apologize if I, if I got it wrong, but that's beauty to me. Really excited for this one. Uh, you know, the German Zawaha. He comes in with that 17 and five record. He is one and two in the UFC. He did lose to Danny Roberts, and most recently. He was knocked out by leg kicks to Jianling Li, who we will discuss later today, as he will be on the main card. So, you know, he's going to be looking to bounce back. We got Ramazan. He sports that 19-4 and record. He's 4-1 and in the UFC. His lone loss came to Rocco Martin back in 2019. He did bounce back from that with a nice unanimous decision victory against Stolze. And, you know, he's going to be looking to continue that re streak going. He's, he's had a pretty successful UFC career so far and looking to see where he can keep it going. Where do you see this one landing, Siraj? Yeah, so you threw, threw, threw out a lot of names that I want to kind of touch on. So let's start with Zawada, right? You threw out the Danny Roberts. You know, that was a very close fight for him. Very, very, very impressive uh, performance overall. Jingling Liang is a big name overall. You know, he's a good, mm -hmm. good striker, knockout artist. Um, I think third round finish, you know, in watching that, good strikes from Jingling Liang. Like, it's what he does, you know? And to be able to keep up with him is tough. These guys come forward. A lot of these Chinese strikers are showing very good promise, especially in later rounds, you know? They just come forward, man. They're able to take the beating and just keep pushing. And, you know, we saw that in that fight. The one thing I like about him though, is he showed that kind of pizzazz against, you know, a compatriot of Emyev, you know, the Dagestani <laughs> wrestler, was able to land a pretty solid finish, you know, from uh, from the down position. So little things like that is something Emyev wants to watch out for, you know, because he's going to kind of go in with that similar mentality. Like he's going to want to push that pace. This guy has a takedown ratio of 10 to 3 in five UFC fights, Jesus. you know? He likes to really push that pace. He, he, he likes to get the fight to the ground, but at the same time, like, like we said, Zawada has, has shown to be a little tricky. Um, can we talk about how this might be one of my most favorite nicknames in all of MMA? Sagat? <laughs> Tell me you know where that's from, my boy. Of course, man. Of course. Street Fighter, Tiger! Tiger! So good, right? A great character. Great right? character. <laughs> and the one thing about Zawada is you have to feel bad. When, when you look at the reason he didn't fight all year, it had really nothing to do with himself, per se. You know, the first fight got canceled because of the corona out outbreak overall. And the second fight got canceled because Lizzie's got corona. So it <laughs> really sucks for him that he wasn't able to fight for that long. But, you know, what kind of fighter can we see in that period of time? We kind of talked about it in the first fight too, right? A long time for a fighter to be able to focus on what he needs to do. And, mm -hmm. and in this case, you know, avoid those takedowns, man. Work that striking. We saw Emi have very, very much struggle with Stoltze in that striking department. If you look at the stats, man, Stoltze did a very good job striking. Unfortunately, yeah. the grappling and the control was just what, what was the ticket for Emi to steal that fight. And if he could get it going early, man, I feel like Z Zawada's going to get tired. I, I think he pushes a pace that if he's not able to get back to his feet and maybe land some good strikes to kind of keep keep him guessing he needs to keep the fight standing as much as possible because at the end of the day to, to rely on the ground game essentially against only the wrestler like he's gonna land some shots it, yeah like, you know it, it's, it's a tough game to do in mma in brazilian jiu-jitsu it's a whole different story but in, in this case i think uh, he's gonna want to avoid the mat here for sure mm -hmm. absolutely and how, how is you know kind of his defense in that in that realm do you believe he's gonna be able to stop mef from from taking him down well, the, the beautiful thing about it is I, I think we have a very good comparison, right? I, I think at the end of the day, you have Emyev who, who, whose ability to take down is just far too good. I think mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you have to be able to mix it up enough to keep him at bay. You're going to have a great reach advantage here. So, like, use it. Keep, keep yeah. him at bay with those keep distance, distance strikes. Yeah. Like, that's that's the best way to do it, you know? And and being that, that good with length, I, I think that's something he has to utilize. Yeah, he has to. He has to play to his strengths for sure. In terms of the Vegas line, where do you see it landing? Are we going to go three for three with the Bells here? I mean, let's hope. I, I like I like the potential of watching Zawada fight. I love it. I, I like there's a potential of this fight being very, very good. However, MEF has a very, very good resume in what he's shown us. I don't like how close the Stolte fight was, but at the end of the day, his grappling looked good enough at who he's about to take on for the next little bit in the UFC. But at the end of the day, obviously, you know, holes and games and all like that's the whole point of the game, right? Everybody's trying to be a champion. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I do have to give Emi the, the, the reign as the favorite. I'm going to have to go with a line of minus 170. Ooh, just outside the range. Mm. Just outside the range. He's actually a minus 250 favorite. Okay. So, you know, that, that UFC record, that recency bias is definitely mm -hmm. coming to play into part here. 
That's very interesting. And you know what? We'll, we'll keep an eye on those lines. And there's a chance that it goes the other way too. You know, like it, it could get worse. It could actually get, in terms of the way the Dagestani guys get pounded, you know, as we get closer to fights, everybody's a Khabib fan and those lines move accordingly. <laughs> For sure. So, you know, that wraps up UFC Fight Island 7. It's going to be a great card. Can't wait for this one. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button. We got our Instagram, our Twitter, all that information there. Give us a shout. We look forward to hearing from you. Siraj, always a beauty, man. Always a beauty, man. I can't believe the first card of the year went so well. I, I literally have goosebumps for the last hour. It's like freezing cold in here. You know, I just, yeah, I'm so <laughs> excited. We got it. We got it done really early. We're going to be able to maybe analyze some lines based on, you know, weigh-ins and all those kinds of things maybe there's some late minute changes who knows you know we're gonna have to keep our ear to the ground and just keep it rolling baby you know what time it is for sure stay tuned for that content so let's go bro let's go baby keep it real keep it locked peace <laughs>